Guys, it's Unders. So today we're having a look at IK Multimedia's T Rex Master Match. What the hell is that? So basically, what they are trying to do is a mastering match EQ. You might have seen the video I've done with Pro Q where you can match a certain sound and it can then copy the EQ spectrum of that sound or do an inverse of it as well so you don't conflict two sounds. This is a similar process, so it's doing spectral matching. What it means by that is it's taking the whole look of a sound, so the big picture. So you're gonna take a big chunk of sound and you're gonna look at it from below 20 hertz right through to a little bit above, 20 kilohertz and it's going to get an average of how everything's responding over that time and that is why on the screen here we can see we've got these two EQ profiles so in this main section here in the bottom and we're running through the 20 hertz right through the 20 kilohertz across the top look and then we've got a decibel range here on the left and we've got these two EQ profiles going on and that's captured the whole of three different master tracks and my track. And it's going to adjust them so that my track sits as close as possible to those three references. And it's doing some clever voodoo trickery on the way. So I thought I'd just show you guys what it's all about and the point of it. Um, for me, I don't generally master my own stuff, but a lot of the beats and stuff I'm putting out at the moment, I want them to sound as good as they possibly can when they go out. Because at the end of the day, I want people to listen to them. I want the vocalist to go, yeah, I really like that. I like how it's mixed. I want to work on that. So it needs to sound on point when it goes out. So I'm using things like this as tools to get me to a stage where the track sounds on point in headphones, in earbuds, on speakers, same as you would with your own music. I always want to mix it to the best possible point, and this is just taking it a little bit further in terms of analysis, and as well, giving you an idea of what's going on and able to shape things. So, the beat I've got here, if we just deactivate this, is this. As you can see from the waveform, it's not been particularly slammed or compressed. It's it's loose, it's nice and spiky. Um, the mix is a bit hot, so it's peaking at 0.3, pushing my limit there a little bit. But as you can see, not been crushed. It's uh, definitely, definitely not a slammed waveform by any means. We can really see all the dynamics and bits going on here. So it is the sort of thing we would look at mastering. And the reason I chose something that I'd done a little bit hot without realizing is that this isn't gonna clip even when it puts a massive boost in because it takes adjustment levels and RMS levels into account as well, which is pretty nifty. So if we enable it and listen to the beat again, and we'll just grab the first like few bars here. Yeah, hell of a lot louder, slamming a lot more. So the waveform we're seeing is not necessarily now what we're hearing. And the reason for that is I've taken three reference tracks here. Now I can't play the reference tracks to you because copyright law will come down on me like a ton of bricks for the three tracks I've used. However, if we go to number one, you can see here quite obviously what that track's gonna be along with two and three. Now I've chosen those three tracks from that album because they've all got an instrumental section in there. And you can see I've highlighted the instrumental section on each one, and I've used that as the reference. Now you can highlight these sections, choose learn reference from over here, and it's gonna build a profile based on these three parts here, which is what you see here. We can then do learn source, and that then learns from the playback here. So let's just do that and we can see what's gonna occur. Cool, we saw a couple of little changes going on there. And we can see here the differences between my beat and the three combined parts from the Dre album here. 
and you can see that I've got quite a big difference around the 500 hertz region. Um, everything else is generally just a little bit quieter. My kicks are higher up than his. He's got much stubbier kicks going on. So like similar level wise. And everything else is, is fairly well balanced. There's a couple of little bits here and there, but it's just generally a bit lower in level and definitely that big dip around 500. Um, as well as here, which would be what, around the 4K sort of marker, 3K sort of marker, bit dipped out there and then a bit of a boost again. Um, you know, some of my instruments are going to be sitting in slightly different places. It's relatively good, sounds all right. When we apply the matching, as you see there, it's introduced the balances that we were talking about and it's tried to account for my kick being in a different place by taking a bit out and then bring it up here which might work we'll see um, it's made that adjustment around 5k and a lot more subtly around here dipping these so that's going to be the difference it's applied to my track to get it to sound closer to the references <laughs> Now we've got two sliders on the right hand side which is the spectral matching and the mix level so it goes to 75% every single time that I've tried this for the mix level but it's trying to get the RMS similar to those references so in theory where we could see that my track was always a bit lower than the Dre one it should now sit the same as it so if we activate it and deactivate it we should hear that profound difference. Yeah, massive boost. So it is definitely like compressing it. I think it might just be limiting. It doesn't specify in the manual, but where I, before I was peaking at 0.3, still peaking at 0.3. So doing the same thing there. It, it's got to be limiting it. I don't know if it's doing it via compression. You just don't get to see. It's level matched it. The spectral matching defines how much EQ it's going to apply. And you see here the EQ has changed we've got our plus 20 db and minus 20 db scale um, with our markers respectively so at the moment the biggest adjustment is only about four decibels which is that's acceptable in sort of ma uh, mastering range we can push that a lot more and we can do that in real time and hear how it sounds <laughs> So it's definitely helping bring out some key areas, but it is shifting the weight a little bit. Um, I, I think I would personally want to keep the 100 area around where it is and then still let it behave here. And we can do that by clicking on the screen, give it a good old double click, and we can introduce a point here and we can do pretty much that. So we could now do this, and it's going to bring that 100 down a lot less than we would reduce that Q a fair amount something around there I would think it's not going to have such a savage adjustment on the low end there <laughs> a bit nicer that keeps the kick in focus a bit more there so another thing we can do we have mode a and mode b uh, one is a lot smoother than the other simple as that so when we introduce mode b we see it's still rolling off a lot in the high end there and it just tries to not be as harsh in what it's done where it's taking these three um <clears throat> these three profiles and being really strict to it it sort of rolls off a bit more gently you just have a listen between the two really and see which profile works for you <laughs> Now 
Now I get loads of extra clarity in A, it sounds really good and bright. However, the feel of the track might suit B. It's gonna be a personal preference thing here. But if I really wanted it to maintain that like that gritty vinyl sound, B is definitely working better, but like clarity and still having that effect because I built it into the track also works. Completely a preference thing there. So that is essentially what the master match is doing for us. It's uh, I'm using it as a tool to get an idea of where my track needs to go and any little adjustments that might need to happen. Um, you know, I generally managed to get it pretty good and I'm happy with how they sound. But it's always good to do this and go, oh crap, there's, there's loads missing in the 500 region. I can go back in the mix and adjust that instead or can just do it here depending on what works for you. That's how I'm using it. You could just take your master tracks, run it through this. If it sounds good and you're happy with it, roll with that. Guys, I appreciate it was a long video. Thank you for staying tuned and I will see you on the next one.